Today on Unity Motorsports Garage, we wrap up the five golden rules of head porting on these big block Ford heads. Stay tuned. If you've been following along with my budget head porting series with the big block Ford heads here, you know that we started out with a set of Edelbrock Victor Jr. 460 heads looking to improve performance. These heads were picked up at a swap meet, got in a trade deal, I think, for my buddy Jason Black. And we wanted to go through and just do a basic port job. Now granted, it's taken a few months because, well, I've been crazy busy. So has David. But anyways, Jason Black is going to finally get his cylinder heads back, and I know he'll be happy. And uh, But the purpose of this was talking about how good John Cossey uh, P51 and SR71 heads are. We thought that we could use David's five golden rules of head porting and get these heads really close for just a little bit of time. When it comes to head porting, it seems as if Certain heads respond better to modifications than other heads. But for this particular job, we were going to focus mainly on the combustion chambers, relieving around the valve so that it's deshrouded, can flow more air, and then you've heard the term bowl porting. Well, that's exactly what we were going to get into with these heads. Go in there, clean up the bowls, not do anything out of the ordinary to get yourself in trouble because I've pretty much followed those golden rules just like you would at home if you had your grinder out on a bench. And uh, you don't have the option of using a flow bench. And so that was the purpose of this project so that we could get some really good gains and not have a whole lot of work tied up in them. So this is the big block forward head. As you can see, this chamber looks completely different than the chamber that I started out with. And all of this area right here has been deshrouded. Come out here. We've put this scavenge plateau here for the exhaust, which that's going to pay huge dividends when Jason starts spraying the nitrous to this thing. But, you know, the thing about this is a little bit of time and effort can go a long ways. Now, I'm going to show you a quick shot of the bowl work that we've done here. As you can see, it's not a whole lot, but these heads seem to respond pretty well for the simple mods here. You know, a lot of people think uh, gasket matching out here does a whole lot. No, no, not really. It's all about this air right here area and getting the air to flow where it needs to go to make best power and torque. Now in this illustration here, you can see how this port has been sectioned and you can kind of see the difference in airflow throughout the port. Imagine this, you're driving down the road 45 miles an hour, you don't just pull into your driveway going 45 miles an hour. You have to slow down in order to make the turn. Think of a port as in that type situation. The bowl has to be large enough for the air to slow down coming through the port to be able to make the turn and go into the combustion chamber. That is the purpose of bowl porting and that's why you see big gains with it because the air has to will be sped up in one area, be able to flow a lot of CFM, and then it gets choked down right here in the bowl. Here's a shot looking down the intake runner, and you can see how the material we moved off of this side here, and if you would section this head, it would actually appear to be scalloped because we're trying to motivate the air to come along through here and come out through the combustion chamber and create some swirl. The thing about swirl is, that's what helps make really good torque in street engines. But, like anything else, there's no free lunch. Anytime that you create swirl, or huge amounts of it, it takes energy to do that. And when you get big swirl numbers, 
a lot of times the uh, CFM will go down on the flow bench because it's taking that energy to convert it into swirl. Like most other Ford heads, the exhaust side is always terrible. I mean, Ford heads have some horrible exhaust ports. But in this particular head, I was able to go in here and make some changes to the short side radius on this exhaust port and do some profiling up here on the guide boss along with enlarging the bowl i mean it doesn't look like we've done a whole lot and this right here is just basically cleaned up on the floor a lot of people will make a huge mistake and go grind out the floor just the gasket match to a set of headers don't do that no because the port still has to have energy and by lowering that you're doing more harm than good if there's one benefit to a big block ford over the big block chevrolet it's the fact that they use a small combustion chamber compared to what a big block chevy uses and that's got a lot to do with the valve angles that's used if you go back in my playlist and i'm going to create a play, uh, playlist the differences between 385 series versus big block Chevrolet uh, you can see this head compared to a big block Chevy AFR head but this chamber right here is going to give us right around a little over 10.4 to 1 compression maybe 10.5 depending on the head gasket used he's going to have to have the heads resurfaced because as you can see there's some marks and those marks were actually on the heads when we got them need to be cleaned up but overall these heads are really going to be some good performers like i said when it comes to head porting and doing a, a budget job don't be afraid to get out in your garage and experiment you know you don't have to be a full-time head porter to realize some good gains if you utilize david's five golden rules you know those golden rules will keep you out of trouble within reason you've got to have control over that grinder another good thing about porting this style or just doing budget porting with uh, into bowls is you're not removing a lot of material from the port itself and that makes the port energy density stay up because the last thing you want to do is make the port really huge to get flow numbers and there's no velocity to go with it normally this is the point where i would be showing you some flow bench work but dv's uh, flow bench is down because we're making a rig to test the uh, air filters for EcoBoost Mustangs. We're knee deep in alligators around here, ain't we, David? That is the truth, right? I, if I was to turn that camera down to the floor level, <laughs> you'd find it was crawling with alligators. <laughs> yeah, they're, everywhere. They're tame at the moment because they've been fed. So they get hungry, another thing. So one of the million questions that we get, or I get, is does DV still port heads? Do I port heads? The answer to that is pretty much no, unless it's something that we the really... R&D stuff, R &D. Where, where somebody's paying the budget. Right. Right, and we can get really into it and science it out. And that's how it is, because David's been messing with the EcoBoost Mustang. I've got Casper. And big block Chevys. Oh yeah, check this out. You won't find big block Chevy ports shaped like that anywhere. And look at this gasket match here that's going to be perfect. It's pretty awesome stuff, isn't it? But anyways, um, we got some really cool stuff coming up with the EcoBoost Mustang, yeah. with the Nitrous. Uh, Andy, let me butt in here. Yeah. We only do cool stuff. I know. That, that, see, that's exactly right. <laughs> So we got Casper, some big stuff's getting ready to happen with it. Uh, even my Crown Vic, the 4.6 project, is still in the shadows. and We're okay. going along with that. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of excited about that. I am too. The first change we're going to make is going to net 
a big about, gang. A, a, yeah, about 60 or 70 rear wheel horsepower. And the next change we make, which be a will be more. the nitrous. Yeah. Yep. That's probably going to bump it up another 150. Yeah. So the Crown Vic's going to go from to ah. Yeah. Based off of what we've done on these heads here, following your five golden rules. And we did that yeah. video on this must be the best cylinder head for the deal. I yeah. can't remember what it was. Well, this here was, was taken doing budget porting to try to get some John Cosy level performance without the price. Yes. And I think we've succeeded. I think this thing will probably make somewhere around 650 horsepower with that uh, can that he's got. What do you think? Like two? Oh, the 460? Yeah. It's um, going to be rowdy. It's, as long as he's got it on the right lobe center line angle, and of course it gets less fussy the higher the compression goes, Yeah. it's going to make some horsepower. Well, he's also going to be putting a ton of nitrous to it. Oh, well, he's going to be up a thousand horsepower. Well, see, now he's trying to outrun me and Casper. So is he really beating me if he beats me with um, our heads? <laughs> You've helped your own competition win. <sighs> That's what but, we do. But, you know, that's that's the game. It is. This is a sport. It is. Right? And the thing is, is we don't mind helping others out. No. And the thing about it is, it's going to be really cool to see. And that's the kind of stuff you get to see on Unity Motorsports Garage and David Vizard. So, until next time, this is David Vizard. Hey, we'll see you guys. And uh, let's hope that 2024 is a speed year for all of you. Oh, yeah. Get back to taming those alligators. Yeah. So this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.